So I have two stories I'd like to share today about Bitcoin. One is Christopher Null at PC World. Trouble with Bitcoin is the government muscles in. Is the honeymoon over for Bitcoin? The little alternative currency that could to kind of set the stage for the recent history with Bitcoin. And uh, we should make sure that we are including in this the current price of Bitcoin because it is down. Wow, down to ninety two dollars. Wow. Um, this might be the time I switch from Litecoin to Bitcoin or, or, or move my Litecoins into Bitcoin. This is why it's it's immediately relevant. Uh, I've got about a third of my cryptocurrency holdings in Litecoin and two thirds in Bitcoins. And I, I if, if Bitcoins are up to 0 0.029 against uh, Litecoin or Litecoin is up to 0 0.029 per Bitcoin. So it's still like, uh, you know, a lot of a lot uh, the, the Litecoins are valued at two dollars and sixty four cents compared to bitcoins at about ninety two dollars but if bitcoins are undervalued right now and are going to go up to where they were again a few weeks or a few months ago right a couple months ago now i know well i mean i was arrested i was in california i was in prison for a week my, my sense of time's a little uh, excuse me but no 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 it was, it was it was months ago it was at least two months ago wasn't it the bitcoin was over two hundred dollars and then crashed it was no, all right, whatever. Um, so, so Bitcoin was was up over two hundred dollars, and it, you know, was it speculation? Was it a flooding to the market? And then some people like started dumping it, and they're they're keeping it down now. Who's to know? And this is why Litecoin has a certain appeal to me: is that you don't have as many early adopters that have massive chunks of all the potential Litecoins out there. You also have faster transaction times. But the other story that I want to share is from Jaron Lukaziewicz, Coin Coinsetter. Will a better virtual currency make Bitcoin obsolete? And he makes the case for Bitcoin, and, and you know he's probably biased and has his investments, but he could obviously easily switch entirely to to anyone else. But he makes a pretty compelling case for why Bitcoin will be the one that endures. So back to trouble with Bitcoin. Recent events have some beginning to doubt whether Bitcoin is viable over the long term and whether it will ultimately be able to live up to its promises of privacy and security. The biggest news arrived yesterday when the Bitcoin Foundation, a Seattle nonprofit organization founded primarily to promote the virtual coins, said it has received a cease and desist order from the state of California's Department of Financial Institutions. And I, I've interviewed people from the Bitcoin Foundation before. Charlie Schramm, a uh, friend of the show here. Failure to comply would subject the group to fines of up to $2,500 per violation per day and possibly criminal prosecution to boot the charge it is a crime to engage in money transmission business without a license and that alone should really piss you off that you need the government permission to engage in a financial transaction but yeah that's the way it works these days under the current system of statism the u.s treasury department issues these licenses failure to register is punishable by additional fines and prison time the immediate problem as has been widely noted is that the bitcoin foundation does not transmit money to anyone it runs on donations, but is basically a lobbying group, not a financial exchange in the vein of Bitcoin Central Clearinghouse, Mount Gox, which has a whole host of other problems now. But is this the government just being so retarded and clumsy that they don't know how to go after them? And so they, they, they want to, I mean, it's a decentralized currency, people. Like, that's the point, is that you don't need, it's like silver. It's like, can you if you, if you go after one silver exchange or, or one group that's promoting silver ownership, like Adam versus the man or agorismetals.com, uh, like, are you going to eliminate silver from circulation? No. And they think they can do this with Bitcoin, but it doesn't work that way. And uh, I, maybe they're not so deluded as to think that they can do that, but they think that they can fight it. And now here's, here's where it gets tricky, because they can fight Bitcoin. Bitcoin. They can fight the institutions that it's based on. They can destroy Bitcoin and drive people to an alternative cryptocurrency. And it could go that way. And that's the potential here. That's the big unknown, right? But whether or not they're going to suppress cryptocurrencies is absurd. They're not going to be able to do it. And the only question is, is it going to be Bitcoin or is Litecoin going to be like the Facebook to the MySpace of Bitcoin? In other words, if you thought how you didn't understand the world of Bitcoin, you aren't alone. Even our own government is having trouble sorting out how things work in this brave new world. They're, no, they're, they're having some trouble sorting out how to fuck with how things are working in this brave new world. This is hardly the first time the Bitcoin universe has encountered growing pains in legal eyebrow raising. Last month, Mount Gox, the largest Bitcoin exchange, found itself facing a similar order to cease and desist operations, also accused with failure to register with the U.S. Treasury. Now, about that... 
It was um, they, they've suspended what payouts to U.S. accounts and dollars from Mount Gox until they're able to come into compliance. So that is a significant major hurdle, and and this is one of the ways that the government can legitimately fuck with the Bitcoin users is by by cutting off the points at which bitcoin are exchanged for dollars because either those have to be publicly advertised you know and or they have to be major public websites where you have um you know you you have a, a, a central server or a host or something that can be attacked that doesn't mean the currency is weakened though because you could even if they even if they shut off every you know outlet every 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 major point at which the Bitcoin economy interacts with the dollar economy, you could still have, I mean, you still have people on Craigslist selling Bitcoins, right? You'd have people doing it in, in uh, you know, on the Silk Road. There would still be a way. People would simply drive their mechanisms of exchange underground. Even if it becomes individual users and it's like, you know, very limited, you can only slow it down. But who knows, that might even have an, an effect of accelerating it because less people will be inclined to move Bitcoin into dollars. And I think once you get to a point of stability and you get Bitcoin back on track where it's just slowly gaining value, and, and that's the course of, of all of these cryptocurrencies. They start from zero and they gain value as they're adopted. It's simple as that. So, okay, it's a lot more complicated than that. But that's the, that's the main concept behind it. And the fact that Bitcoin is down uh, is a sign... Uh, of either a temporary setback or a permanent setback, but it doesn't change the fact that if the normal course of progress is allowed to continue, it will continue gaining in value. And uh, I, eventually it, it, it will uh, stabilize on a steady, relatively predictable curve. So in related news, also over the past weekend, it was revealed that the U.S. government through the DEA has actually seized bitcoins from someone as part of a forfeiture of property operation. It's the first known occurrence of a government agency actually taking bitcoins from someone by force, something that isn't supposed to be possible based on the way the currency is designed. And it's not. And in parentheses here, it says, it's suspected that this seizure is a bit of a misnomer that the DEA either took control of the suspect's computer, which had an unencrypted Bitcoin wallet on it, or more likely it simply, tr simply tricked the suspect into buying something, some phony illicit substance through an online sting operation. And there are a lot of theories going around about how this actually went down and what the government did to you know seize the bitcoins or come into possession of the bitcoins like did they have them transmit the bitcoins to a government controlled wallet you know and if it was a sting operation and that's what it looks like because there is a report from the FBI about this and the, the, it's it's only glancingly mentioned on like the second to last page of this that the, the thing about the bitcoins so who knows and 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 you know I, I again this might have a chilling effect but most people buying drugs on the Silk Road or on Atlantis, which is the Litecoin version of, of the Silk Road, which is a little more operating in the open, actually, um, and uh, having a major advertising push. By the way, if anybody from Atlantis is watching this, um, please, we would welcome your sponsorship at Adam vs. The Man. For the business community, all of this adds up to a lot of questions about what happens next. Imagine if you didn't know from one day to the next whether the doors of your bank would remain open or if the dollars you had on account there would actually continue to work as legal tender. For most Bitcoin users today, this uncertainty appears to be part of the fun since it drives the exchange rate of Bitcoins up and down with remarkable velocity. Business users, on the other hand, have less tolerance for this kind of risk, particularly if more and more of their sales are denominated in the, cur in, in the currency. Writing on the cease and desist letter for Forbes, Bitcoin Foundation Director John Matona says that, quote, freedom of choice in currencies is probably the most important free speech issue of our time. And once you reduce it to nothing but ones and zeros, denying that it's speech by government gets really difficult. So as, free as that freedom begins to impact the fortunes of the increasingly shaky dollar, we'll soon see whether the government agrees with that sentiment. Well, no, the government doesn't agree because the government wants to maintain the dollar racket going as long as it can, but its days are numbered. So... Will a better virtual currency make Bitcoin obsolete? Building my first startup in the highly competitive online ticketing industry taught me a lot about who wins and loses in a challenge and changing environment. Many people in the tech world suggest that all you need to do in order to attract customers is to build a great pro product and users will naturally come. While building a great product is vital, it's not the whole story. As all around us, we see large and perfect companies dominating their market while new entrants with theoretically better products never quite gain traction. Many entrepreneurs rely upon this create a better product strategy and never understand why users aren't willing to leave their old product for the shiny new thing. With many people questioning if Bitcoin is the best implementation of virtual currency, I can already see parallels in comparing Bitcoin with other options. The answer to whether Bitcoin is the long-term winner in this race is actually quite clear. 
And he points out an interesting natural market dynamic of, of human beings being creatures of habit, uh, you know, but also just going with what they know. And that's, you know, another uh, thing behind the, the, the trend of corporatism. I think, uh, you know, there's a natural market tendency that bolsters that. Now, this is not to say that Bitcoin is the best product. He's not making that case, but he is from that basis making the case that that function of, of, of consumers, of users of Bitcoin wanting to stick with Bitcoin as, as opposed to going to Litecoin, uh, will give it enough momentum as the first to market to keep it as the primary cryptocurrency. First, most people would admit that Bitcoin is not perfect. The 10-minute confirmation time is not optimal for quick transactions. The 51% attack is still a looming risk. Then there's the huge amount of energy wasted in the mining process. Not great from an environmental standpoint. I'm not the first person to point these issues out. And in response, many people have already released other virtual currencies that aim to improve upon the movement that Bitcoin has started. Litecoin, Ripple, PPC coin, Feathercoin, BBQ coin and all others and, and others cl all claim to be a better virtual currency and their proponents are just waiting for Bitcoiners to flock over. BBQ coin, I don't what I don't want my currency to be associated with a food product. Sorry. There is something superior about the name Bitcoin, right? If nothing else than from a branding perspective, they've got that dominance, but even Litecoin rip like Bitcoin. It really has uh, you know, Barbecue coin is obviously the most delicious of the virtual currencies and way more delicious than Bitcoin, but what would need to happen for it to truly rival Bitcoin? I think it helps to take a step back and ask why a lot of Bitcoin's imperfections exist in the first place. These imperfections were not oversights by its core developers. They were expected byproducts of thoughtful decisions that they made. For instance, the 51% attack is only possible because of the extremely distributed nature of the mining structure that makes Bitcoin unstoppable by groups that would limit it. So it's a trade-off. You get the 51% attack as a threat, which is extremely, extremely unlikely, but you get the advantage of the distributed nature. A system like Ripple reduces this particular risk and uses far less energy in the process, but by using trusted gateways as the basis for making confirmations, it is prone to government manipulation. And that's the biggest problem with Ripple. It's it's not like these, it's not a true cryptocurrency in the sense that it's it's distributed and, and not based on a central authority. Though I believe Ripple as a technology is needed and will be successful, I see its form inevitably becoming influenced by the government. Excuse me, now I, I disagree. If the niche it's going to fill is the cryptocurrency that's manipulated by government, fucking skip that step, people. Go straight to whatever the proper cryptocurrency is. Bitcoin companies will have to play ball with regulation, but the currency itself will hold its ability to force desired change in the world. Beyond imperfections, Bitcoin has an attribute that will solidify its place as the only viable virtual currency. Bitcoin's use as an IP address for money. While closed payment networks will initially be apprehensive to accept Bitcoin transfers, they will find that they must accept out-of-network Bitcoin transfers or become obsolete. Within the next five years, almost all closed payment networks will have an input for your Bitcoin address, turning them into open payment networks that can accept money from anyone. However, you won't find two inputs on these apps for your Bitcoin and Litecoin address. Bitcoin is the only virtual currency that has sufficient adoption to become the standard. If you want to know how the story unfolds, I encourage you to read the history of the internet and TCP IP. And, you know, here I'm, I'm not sure where, where he's going with this, because if it's the fact that, like, Bitcoin is going to be the first to break down the doors and mainstream businesses, online businesses, are going to have to accept Bitcoins, then... You know, just like that, they can add another line or two of code, right? And they can be taking Bitcoins or Litecoins or anything else. Who knows? Further solidifying Bitcoin as the only viable virtual currency, wider adoption will lead to increased switching costs. Once a company product, or in this case a currency, takes dominance of an industry, people don't tend to leave it for something with low value improvements. This happens firstly because people find comfort in familiar things and don't become compelled to try something new unless the benefit is overwhelmingly obvious. Bitcoin already has far wider adoption than any of its alternatives and is substantially more infrastructure being built around it. Second is track record. Okay, now see, again, I, I here I, I really, I don't know if I buy this argument because it, it like all the, all the basics of what he's saying are true, but you're entering a new world where the switching costs are, you know, virtually nothing, right? We're talking about the internet here. Like, I can switch my Litecoins to Bitcoins through uh, a Bitcoin exchange instantly, as far as I'm concerned. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of keystrokes. So I think at some point, you're either going to see that the equation is, you know, most people right now can say, okay, well, there's infrastructure, Bitcoin, name recognition, acknowledged. There's a cost to switching to Bitcoin other than, you know, the zero cost of, of, of you know, making the exchange. But it, at some point, you, you know, you're, we're going to see either that that's growing 
or shrinking. And we don't have enough data to see where those two lines are going. And the two lines are the, you know, what is the, uh, the the switchover cost, and if anything, I think the switchover cost is going to be re is is going to see as, um, you know, well, it's going to be seen as increasing as more infrastructure is built around Bitcoin. But if anything, the technology will allow it to be easier. And the line of what is the advantage of switching to Litecoin? And right now, if it's transaction times, you know, maybe and 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 security, maybe that alone for an individual. Eh, but at some point the major institutions, the businesses doing business in cryptocurrencies are going to go, well, shit, maybe just adding Litecoin is as easy as flicking a switch or whatever the, the upcoming cryptocurrency is, and then we'll let the market decide. For his, Okay, so um, second is track record. For as bad as a product is perceived to be proven good enough, reliability goes a long way against unproven alternatives. That's a very good point. Bitcoin's four years of success in the face of hackers and growing transaction volumes builds confidence. Finally, Bitcoin has very social roots. Given the value now associated with the word Bitcoin, it is very unlikely that another virtual currency will match its cachet in the next five years. Nope, I you know that's where I disagree. I mean, the fortunes of... Uh, reputation come and go very fast on the internet. So will a better virtual currency make Bitcoin obsolete? The answer is very clear to me. Bitcoin isn't perfect, but it doesn't have to be in order to fend off competitors and remain the world's dominant virtual currency. An understanding of this notion presents an opportunity for people that understand it today. Until traders widely realize that Bitcoin is here for good, there will be a lot of untapped value in Bitcoin's market price. The currency's longevity will become obvious over time and be reflected in prices down the road. So eat your barbecue coins, sell your PP coins, and go buy some Bitcoins before they're back at $200. Now, I'm not convinced... I'm not convinced. And it just so happens that Jared Lukaziewicz is the CEO and founder of Coinsetter, a New York City-based company that offers a high-performance levered trading platform for Bitcoin. So maybe he's got a little cost of switching over. He's trying to avoid and, and hoping that, uh, that Bitcoin will be the dominant thing. I don't think he's really um, in any way lying here, misrepresenting his true beliefs. But I, I'm just not convinced. And I, I do appreciate a lot of his points, and I think it speaks to the momentum and the strength of Bitcoin, certainly. And it's important to examine a lot of these market dynamics. But uh, at least for the time being, uh, especially with, with Bitcoin uh, where it is, as long as Litecoin is, is maintaining some stability next to it, I, I think I'm going to be uh, maintaining at least a little bit of diversity in my cryptocurrency portfolio. CNBC has staked out its position now as an enemy of the Bitcoin. The address has changed several times, and I'll do my best to keep the link here current. Shire Silver's product, Bitcoin, all these different alternative currencies are for sale.